Beach Town was founded in Houston, Texas in the early 90s by brothers Delano Connor, aka Dino, and Solomon Connor, aka Shazam, as well as their friend Daryl Jackson, aka GI. The members all grew up together on the south side of the city where violence, drugs, and gangs were abundant. The brothers even got caught up for a time. To put a stop to it, they were sent to live with their grandmother. While there, they got the chance to watch their uncles jam on their instruments. The experience was enough to inspire the Connor boys to move away from the street life and go towards something more positive like music. Classmate and neighbor G.I. grew up in a family full of athletes, but ended up developing a love for music. He started things off by first working as a DJ for a local skating rink, and then moved on to honing his rapping skills. Since the trio lived in the same neighborhood from around the age of eight or nine, they knew of each other. However, their musical collaboration didn't start until high school. As teens, the Connor brothers found themselves part of one singing group while G.I. was part of another. While in attendance at an audition, the organizers suggested that the three of them should form a group. So they did. They called themselves The Gents. They recorded their first album titled It's No Dream. It featured the ballad A Time For Us with Shazam on lead vocals. The album was only released locally and didn't achieve the outcome the guys hoped it would. After meeting their producer, he would make the wise decision to put Dino in the lead singing role, seeing his potential and rare voice as the formula for the group's success. Then the group's manager, who just happened to have a connection to two live crew rapper and record label executive, Luther Luke Campbell, hooked the boys up with an audition. Before they knew it, the gents became the first act Luke signed to his label, Luke Records. Their name, though, didn't sit well with the boss. Luke suggested they change it to what would then become known as the local nickname for their hometown of Houston, H-Town. H-Town's debut album, Fever for the Flavor, was released in April 1993. The first single, called Knock in the Boots, would become their biggest hit, and also their signature song. The track, which contained samples from Zap's Be Alright, hit the top spot on the R&B chart and peaked at number three on the Hot 100. Uh, give me some good love. Somebody rockin', rockin devil. The ladies especially were feeling the song so much that it made some of them do strange things. Shazam told one story of a woman who he invited to his hotel room, noticing a familiar pair of footwear. She asked him if they were the actual boots that he wore in the Knock into Boots video. As soon as he confirmed that they were, she took off running with them and disappeared. Later, she did come back, but without the boots. Of course, he asked for her to return them, but she insisted that he wouldn't want them anymore. Why? Because she had made love to them. Unfortunately, the group's follow-up single, Lick You Up, didn't do anywhere near as well. According to H-Town, the reason simply had to do with the lyrics being just too raunchy. So much so that Lick You Up remained the album version, and an alternative mix was created called Kiss You Up. The following year, the group made their first movie soundtrack appearance with Part-Time Lover for the sports drama film Above the Rim. Produced by Devante Swing of Jodeci, the track made it into the top 10 on the R&B chart. Also at this time, the group received the Best New R&B Artist Award at the 1994 Soul Train Music Awards. The trio's vocal ability wasn't the only thing on display. They also wrote, produced, and arranged many of their popular songs. Another ace they had in their back pocket was their looks, especially Dino and Shazam. The brothers, who were born just 11 months apart, looked nearly identical. They both sported attractive facial features, a smooth caramel complexion, and great physiques. Later, those factors provided them with the perfect gimmick, marketing themselves as twins. Many years later, though, information would come to light via their Texas State birth records that Shazam was born in December 1973 and Dino was born in November 1974. Even though the group was achieving a tremendous amount of success, their pockets weren't getting any deeper. After producing a hit song and platinum album, they found themselves still living in the hood. Thus began a major battle between the members and their label over money as well as creative control. Despite all of that drama going on behind the scenes, the guys pressed on and completed Begging After Dark, their second album, and dropped it in November 1994. Half a dozen singles were released, with the most popular being Emotions. It just missed claiming a top 10 placement on the R&B chart, coming in at number 11. 
While promoting the album, H-Town made probably their most memorable TV appearance ever on BET's Video Soul. The trio didn't hold back with their words or their attire. They came out on stage in outfits that resembled prison garb, complete with shackles on their ankles. Dino and Shazam let it rip that they weren't happy and didn't feel that their label was giving their work the push it deserved. G.I. sat in silence. In their 2015 Unsung episode, Luke admitted that he felt hurt over the interview and didn't understand what the group was upset about. Their manager pointed out that the guys didn't even attempt a more professional approach to sit down with Luke and work things out. Another movie soundtrack opportunity came up when H-Town recorded a cover version of The Persuaders, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, featuring Shirley Murdoch and Roger Troutman for the 1996 film of the same name. The song gave the group another top 40 pop and top 10 R&B hit. At this time, and due to other business issues plaguing the company, eventually resulting in a bankruptcy filing, H-Town moved on from Luke Records. While shopping around for another deal, Relativity Records, a division of Sony, came with the best offer. So they took it. The group then did an about face that was showcased on their next project, Ladies' Edition, Woman's World. Released in October 1997, the album's general theme serves as an apology to women for what its members feel have been grievous transgressions in attitude on the part of the hip-hop world. G.I. explained the move to the LA Times. We're apologizing for every man, not just us. We know we're looked at as role models. If we put it across, some people will take heed of it and change their ways. Some songs call women B's and H's, and we want to redirect that. We never use that, but you hear it so much on the radio, so much in the streets. Tracks like Ways to Treat a Woman, A Natural Woman, and the one and only single, They Like It Slow, have a more respectful tone and conscious attitude towards the opposite sex. According to the liner notes, the album was dedicated to homicide victim Nicole Brown Simpson, ex-wife of former professional football player O.J. Simpson, as well as all the women of the world. Numerous national women's telephone helplines were also listed on the back cover. The label, however, didn't share the same love for the project as the guys did. As a result, they weren't interested in putting any promotion behind it, and just wanted the group to go back into the studio and back to their old sound. While on a phone call with the president of their label, Dino lost his cool when he heard them offer the group $2 million for a sexier album. He told them that if their current work didn't receive the attention it deserved, that it would be the last H-Town album the label would ever get. And then he hung up. Things would now go from bad to worse. The group was in breach of their contract and without any new hits, the kind of money they were making from live performances dwindled significantly. Now seemed as good a time as any to go on a hiatus. GI focused on work behind the scenes while Shazam and Dino both worked on solo projects. Shazam's got released in 2000. Dino ran into a lot of difficulty trying to release his, so it ended up never getting off the ground. The disappointment kicked off a depression. He also eventually filed for bankruptcy. After a heart-to-heart -heart with his brother Shazam, Dino decided to put the past behind him, move forward, and get back to doing what he loved. H-Town reunited, started doing shows again, courting offers from record labels, and began organizing a tour. Then, the day that they were all scheduled to meet to sign some contracts, Dino was a no-show. Sadly, the reason would soon be revealed that it was because he and his pregnant girlfriend were involved in a major car accident, when a group of people, after committing a robbery, fled at a high rate of speed, ran a red light, and crashed into the couple on January 28, 2003. Dino's girlfriend died at the scene, while Dino succumbed to his injuries on the way to the hospital. He was 28 years old. In the group's unsung episode, Shazam would reveal that Dino actually wrote a song just weeks before his passing about his own death. When Shazam questioned him about why he would choose to write the track called The Day I Die, Dino's response was that he felt he wasn't going to be on Earth for very long. The label didn't want to continue with a two-man group and told Shazam and G.I. that they needed to find another member to continue with their deal. They decided to walk away. The following year, H-Town released their fourth album, Imitations of Life, the last project Dino worked on before he passed. It didn't produce any hit singles. Shazam, still mourning the loss of his brother, began drinking heavily and, in his own words, gave up on life for a while. 
Years later, G.I. decided to open up some social media pages for H-Town. He was pleasantly surprised at how many followers and how much love the group was receiving after being out of the spotlight for so long. He showed the results to Shazam, and before long, H-Town was back. In 2015, they released their last studio album to date, titled Child Support. The title is a nod to the fans who claim that H-Town owes them money after procreating to the group's songs. That title would also really hit home for one of the two surviving members. That same year, Shazam would be arrested for failure to pay his own child support. His tab? $170,000. Three years later, TMZ reported that he got busted again for the same offense. The duo continues to release music in various forms, including their first mixtape called Call Me Mr. Pac-Man in 2017 and their first EP titled Date Night in 2021. In 2019, H-Town accepted the honor of being inducted into the National R&B Hall of Fame. Currently, Shazam and G.I. continue to record and tour together while striving to keep H-Town's and Dino's legacy alive.